Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Someone suggested we start the service with hell, but I, I kind of like the sacredness of in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But but to all of you this morning, hell. If you're new here, it's it's a a, a great video. <laughs> but we're glad you're here this morning. We uh, begin our services, whatever the service is, uh, as we always have, and that is we pray. So I ask you to look around the room, look into your heart. If you're at home watching us, uh, look into your world. Uh, take a moment to prepare your hearts in the silence of that moment, because the rest of the service will not be silent. And uh, take a moment to breathe and give thanks and pray as the Spirit leads. So let's pray. Father, into this sacred place, place set aside for the purpose of building up your body for effective works of service, for the reception of the gifts of the Spirit and the encouragement of his presence, for the preaching and the proclamation of the word, for prayer, fellowship, family, the safety of our children, and a place built for peace, a place, place set aside for rest. This day, in the midst of a rather hectic season, we stop and we enjoy a moment which will be uh, full of energy and life and music and word, but at the same time a moment where we can rest our weary souls in the proclamation of the great news which shall be for all people. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this we celebrate in his name. Amen. Before we begin, we have tried to make it a tradition of honoring uh, those who are having birthdays, and it is our privilege this morning to have three rather special birthdays. I'll start from the youngest to the oldest. That is, Shane will be turning 38. 38, is that right, Shane? 38. Christopher, Christopher, I thought his father when I said Christopher. Chris turned 44 this week. And if we double that number, we get 90, which my math is never very good. But we do get 90, and it is Shirley's 90. She's got family home, and we have some special things we're going to do a little later on at coffee time. But you didn't hear that part, Shirley, did you? Good. Uh, so, Dylan, where are you? Oh, boy. oh, no, Donna, you do the notes better than I do. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday. Shakers and Shirley, happy birthday to you. Early in ministry, I tried to find a model for my ministry that would lead and guide me, and I found Kermit the Frog, which seems to suit me well. All right, take your bulletins, just draw attention to a couple of brief items. First off this afternoon is our care center service at 2.30. If you could join us, we would love to have a choir. Uh, Chris is really doing the service this, uh, this afternoon, so if you could come, support him, but also just to have people to sing, it's always very encouraging. Uh, so that's at 2.30 this afternoon. And then Club DJ, are we still on this week? Club DJ continues on. Our last Bible study of this year will also be, and then Friday night, Carols and Coco, not in here in the fellowship hall at the back. We've got some good things planned. So Friday night, it is the 21st, the longest night of the year, correct? 22nd, well, just after the longest night. And that's on Friday. And then Sunday, uh, no Sunday school coming up. This is our last Sunday school. Uh, so 11 o'clock here for regular service. Chris will be bringing his uh, final message as he wraps up his internship. And then Christmas Eve service here at 7 p.m. and the rest. I will leave for you to look at. All right, is there anything I have forgotten? All right, what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to call each person up just so that they know. So you'll kind of see me standing in the corner rather than me coming up here traipsing back and forth. I'll just stand there and say in a nice loud voice, and now your turn. <laughs> They'll look at me like, my turn? Your turn? I'll call you. So just so you know. Uh, but before we do that, I want to ask the Jeffreys to come on up as we light the third Advent candle, the candle of joy. This week is the week of 
joy or the shepherd's candle will be lighting the pink one. God of hope, you call us home from the exile of selfish oppression to the freedom of justice, the balm of healing, and the joy of sharing. Make us strong to join you in your holy work as friends of, of strangers and victims, companions of those whom others shun, and as the happiness of those whose hearts are broken. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Merciful God of peace, your work spoken by the prophets restores your people's life and hope. Fill our hearts with the joy of your saving grace, that we may hold fast to your great goodness, and in our lives proclaim your justice in all the world. Amen.
Last year we had the first Sunday School Kids Christmas concert that this church has had in a long time. And I've been praying that God would send more kids, and he did. So this year we have about twice as many kids as we had last year, which is wonderful. So each class is going to come up and do something special for you.
Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Before, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and well toward men.
<coughs> Look at the candy cane. What do you see? Stripes that are red like the blood shed for me. White is for my Savior, who is sinless and pure. J is for Jesus, my Lord, that's for sure. Turn it around, turn it around, and the stuff you'll see. Jesus, my shepherd, was born for me. Merry Christmas. <coughs> That's right. Send me a screenwriter. I have an idea for the greatest movie epic of all time. What? He's on his way? Then why isn't he? Never mind. Here he is. Sit down and take notes. <laughs> I'm on no sleep, 10 cups of coffee, two cans of Red Bull, and a bag of Twizzlers for lunch. And I've come up with the greatest movie idea of all time. All time. Okay. There's a man and a woman and a baby. A special baby. You mean like an actor or a politician? No, the opposite. Okay. He's special, but in a good way. No, in a great way. Okay, that's an interesting twist to work with. A family movie, maybe a love story between the baby's parents. Oh yeah, the baby's parents. Ooh, the baby's parents-to-be have to travel to the father's hometown. But when they get there, there's some kind of crisis and all the hotels are closed. So they end up in a warehouse, a shipping container. Nice, like an art house, bohemian kind of feel. The set design, love that. Then there's a crisis. Let's see... I know, she goes into labor at the worst possible time. Yeah, I love it. They can't find a doctor, so they need some kind of makeshift crib, yada yada yada. Oh, then some blue collar guys come into town to help. Working stiffs, you know, welders, dock workers, I got it, farmers. Farmers. <laughs> Coming to a warehouse in the middle of a city. Yeah. Uh, why? Because. Only the common man knows that this baby is special. Okay, I think I get where you're going now. Something the regular working person can relate to. And the farmers help out somehow. Help out, hang out, I don't know, something like that. You're the writer, you figure it out. Oh, I've got it. The birth scene ends with a long pull-out camera shot of the father, mother, baby, and visitors in the warehouse for a final iconic shot. Nice, that could work. So what does the baby do that's so special? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Yet. Ooh, I see a sequel coming. Can you do it? Oh, sure, it's sparse, but I can make something of it. It's a great premise, a feel-good story. It sets up a sequel. I can make it into a full-length movie. Or a book. Maybe both. Actually, let's add a little more to punch it up. Okay, but I don't need anything else. I've started with a lot less. I want the birth itself to be special. Ah, like an alien fringe thing where the kid comes exploding out of- No, no, not the birth, the conception. Aha, uh -huh, you want the conception to be special. Well, that's an entirely different movie, sir. What kind of special conception are you talking about? You're the writer, you figure it out. Taxes, I hate taxes. Uh... Why aren't you writing this down? Well, it's so political. Animals. I love animals. Animals. You mean like a dog or a cat? I know, a talking pet who rescues the baby. A talking animal? Please, be realistic here. Yeah, right. That would be the crazy part. No, just, you know, some place where there'd be livestock around. I know, we need exotic visitors from another land with fancy gifts. So it's a huge costume drama now. You know, this budget will be through the roof, right? A crazy king. And he does something so evil, people will gasp in horror. Oh, now it's a horror movie. <laughs> I don't know, sir. An escape to a foreign country. Now that's a huge epic, right? Epic isn't really the use I word. 
more like schizophrenic. What was that? Uh, nothing, sir. But you know, you're talking Hunger Games size here. Three to four books and movies. If you can get all this to make sense in the same story, I don't know. A star. Ah, now you're making sense. If we could get a big star to sign on, we might be able to get this green lighted. I'm thinking Russell Crowe, Jennifer Lawrence. No, not that kind of star. I mean the star in the sky, like a comet. Hurling towards the earth to destroy it, like a disaster movie. The opposite of that. What's the opposite of... Oh, and angels. Angels coming and going all over the place. And a musical number. You mean like Broadway? Bigger. Uh, maybe I'll just get the angels to do the big musical number. That's perfect. Listen to this. It splits history in half. Mm, so you want a feel-good, family, love story, art house, political, costume, drama, horror, escape, disaster that's not a disaster, supernatural, musical, historical epic with animals and angels. Anything else? Peace. Uh, yeah, peace, man. No, the story. It brings peace to the whole world. Of course it does. What would it take to do all of that? Oh, you mean like from aside from a billion dollars? Yeah, that. Uh, okay, this is Lord of the Rings territory now. We're talking three to four huge books, five to seven movies, maybe a theme park. We're practically creating a new religion here. Oh, no, we're not doing that. The last thing the world needs is a new religion. Okay, well, it's nice to know you draw the line somewhere. But I gotta tell you, I don't see how any of it will make sense in the same story. Well, work on it and get back to me in a week. One week later. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. I'm feeling a lot better now. You helped me so much in this past week. This is my first day back in the office since my uh, episode. I'm waiting on a screenwriter to come in. I think I scared him a little last week and I need to apologize. Then I'll take that overdue vacation, like you recommended. Oh, here he is. Gotta go. Thanks, Doc. Hello. I never did get your name. Oh, never mind that. Here. Uh, wh what's this? It's our screenplay, and I have to say, it's the best thing I've ever written. You mean this, this is our screenplay? Yep, and it's all here. What's all here? Everything we talked about. It's a feel-good family love story, art house, political costume, drama, horror, escape, disaster is not a disaster, supernatural, musical, history, epic, with animals and angels. Uh-huh. Uh, security, I have a code red. Listen, last week when I had you in here, I wasn't exactly myself. I may have said some things that were a little bit, I don't crazy? know. Well, crazy's a little strong. Oh no, sir, you were crazy. And then I started thinking about it, and I don't know, something just came over me. Please, sir. Uh, crazy? Uh, yeah, fair enough. But just give it a read. Sure, sure I'll read it. But for now, I have a couple of friends who are here to going to take you to see another friend of mine, okay? Wait a minute. I don't get it. No, no, you don't understand. This isn't, this is not what it seems. Just read it. Read it, please. Well, I guess it couldn't hurt. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit, because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived of her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, and he will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. And he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census be taken of the entire Roman world. Everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, uh, Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, a time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And he gave him the name Jesus. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. 
An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things in her heart and pondered them in her head. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which they, they had just been told. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and said, Where is the one that has been born, King of the Jews? We saw a star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child and kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I will call my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance to the time that he had learned from the Magi. The, then he, what he said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to which was his own, but they, his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children are not born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you. shoulders and he will be called Water, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and of Peace.
thought there was more. So, uh, three weeks ago, we decided we were just going to sing some songs for you, and then two weeks ago, last week, I dropped the play on these guys. They were very happy with me. So, I would like to introduce, uh, we are going to do a play, a quick skit, called Someone is Coming to Our House, and playing the part of the pastor will be Pastor Dan. Playing the part of our star, Gabby, the flamingo, is Keith. Playing Minnie, the storyteller, is Jordy. And the owl will be played by Danny, and a lamb by Jack. Uh, at the end, there will be a song. Um, we're going to sing Joy to the World from page 52 of the hymnals. If you want to have that ready for us, we'll all stand up and sing with them. Hi, Gabby. Isn't it wonderful about today? Well, Pastor, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's not Sunday. In fact, it's actually Tuesday, which means we still have four more days until Sunday. And if you start your sermon now, well, your Sunday sermons are long enough. What are your Tuesday sermons going to be like? Gabby, this is a special <laughs> Tuesday. It's Christmas Eve, the night of the birth of the baby Jesus. Well, okay. I know it's Christmas Eve. That's why I don't have time for one of your sermons. I have a lot of preparation to do. Like what? I'll show you. I have to hang my stocking. Gabby, that's a huge stocking. Well, I do have very long legs. Anyway, I also have to have my cookies ready, and all my presents wrapped and under the tree, and I have to clean out my nest. It's very messy. But Gabby, don't you have time to prepare for the most wonderful event of the year? Oh yeah, I forgot. I gotta take a bath. Can, can I use the baptismal font? No, Gabby, you can't use the baptismal font. And the most wonderful event of the year is not a bath. It is if you're molting. <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking about preparing for the birth of baby Jesus. And there's a lot to prepare for. Yes. Actually, Gabby, not many people know this, but the animals were a very important part of baby Jesus' birth. What animals? Well, a lamb, an owl, a horse, some mice, a duck, some birds and a cow. Hey, don't forget the squirrels! Okay, I think you better explain. This is the story about someone coming to our house. Gabby, you can help me with this story. Do you know where baby Jesus was born? Oh yeah, it, it starts with a B. Uh, is it Blumenfeld? Gabby. <laughs> it's Bethlehem. Anyway, a very, very, very long time ago, in a small town called Bethlehem, there was a gathering of many, many people from all over the countryside. You see, King Herod wanted to take a census of all the people so he could charge them taxes. So everyone was ordered to gather in the little town of Bethlehem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. There were people all over town because the next day was when everyone would be counted for the king. So where did they sleep? Every inn in Bethlehem was full except for one special place. A place where many animals stayed. The lion's campground. <laughs> no, Gabby. A stable way out on the very farthest end of town of Bethlehem. A stable? With hay and horses and mice and dirt? Hey, it sounds like my nest. You'd better not have any mice. Aren't you more concerned about the horses? Excuse me, the story? Well, then the most beautiful thing happened. Angels heard on high. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. The most beautiful voice is telling us, the animals, to prepare a special place. But who would want to come to our house, a cold, dark, and dirty stable? But someone is coming to our house, Lamb. Then we must clean the floor and dust the beans. And all the while, I'll keep watch, for someone was coming to our house. And so all the animals scurried about. The mice, the birds cleaned the rafters. The horse and the lamb moved out the old hay and spread fresh, clean hay all around. Daddy, Daddy, 
Hours passed, and the night grew dark and cold, but the animals were very busy getting ready, for someone was coming to our house. And suddenly, there, sitting on a beam, I saw them coming. <clears throat> but who was coming to our house? <laughs> we did not know. But the angels told us this would be the most special night of all, and so we were ready. The night was very quiet. No one made a sound. We all waited by the door. Ooh, they're coming. Be ready. They're coming. And then there appeared Joseph, carrying a small oil lamp to light their way, and Mary riding on a donkey. Mary looked very tired and cold. We all stepped back to make a path for them, and one by one, the animals laid down in the soft hay around Joseph and Mary. You see, the warmth of all the animals helped to warm the stable on that cold night. And then it happened. The miracle the angels told us about, the birth of baby Jesus. And Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a soft manger. Away in a manger! Back, did you already sing that one? Oh, sorry. Sorry. The stable was filled with warmth in the most beautiful glow that could be seen for miles. Who? There are coming to our house. And more came to see the Christmas miracle, and they brought gifts. We three kings of Orient are bringing gifts. We traverse the clock, <laughs> field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. It was the most beautiful night, so quiet and peaceful. Silent night, holy night. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh yeah, I was supposed to be with that. <laughs> that most holy night, Gabby, a king came to our house, and our gift to baby Jesus was a safe, warm place to deliver a joy for all the world to behold. Joy to the Okay, okay, Gabby. Why don't we just all stay? Why don't we stand together and sing joy to the world? morning's offering. If you are visiting with us here this morning, don't feel obligated to contribute. Uh, you are our guests. Let's pray. Father, in the season of joy, as we share the abundance you have blessed us with, and despite uh, being a difficult year, you have continued to bless us as people, as those who work, and as a church, we thank you for that abundance. And now, with a joyful heart, we give back to you as an act of worship. In Jesus' name. I'll ask our ushers. Oh, there they are. Jeff and Jared. Safe is off.
the meaning of Christmas? Nope. Do you know the meaning of Christmas? No. Darn. Let's ask these guys. Do you guys know the meaning of Christmas? Yes. What is it? You have to guess. You have rats. Well. <laughs> How about this clothes? Must be it. Uh, this suit costs more than your house and your car combined. That's gotta be it. It brings so much Christmas joy you'll be blinded. Literally. <laughs> Is this the meaning of Christmas? No! Well. Well, let's see what else we got here. Aha! Is this the meaning of Christmas? Oh, how you doing? How about there? this? 28 pounds of lights, about 6.5 bajillion watts, and, and some Christmas balls. Gee, that'll be bad on your electric bill. You think? Oh, how about look at this? this. This has to be it. Is it the meaning of Christmas? No, baby, it's Back to square one. What else is back? <laughs> ribbon. Is this it? Everybody loves ribbon. Is that the meaning of Christmas? No, baby, it's How about this? Christmas banquet. Turkey, ham, cookies, stuffing, you name it. Potatoes. Bacon? I don't know what you have on Christmas. Everybody uh, needs food. Yeah, how about this? Is the meaning of Christmas? No, bacon, Man, I'm getting discouraged. Y'all are a difficult <laughs> bunch. <laughs> well, here's the final one. How about this? Presents. Presents galore. This one's a six presents. billion dollar Starbucks gift card. <laughs> are presents the meaning of Christmas? No! Well, we're out of ideas. What, what is, is the it? meaning of Christmas? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> First off, I simply want to thank uh, teachers and students and adults who all kicked in. Um, I recognize that every home has traditions, and in the Dale home, they usually don't have turkey for Christmas. They have more ham than they do. Uh, that was really weak, sorry. About that. Our hope this morning is that in the fullness of the season, when we've got so much going on, that the simplicity and the beauty 
Now, the familiarity, perhaps, or the fresh way of looking at the message has been shared with you this morning. Peace on earth, goodwill towards all, for unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Father, we thank you for this season, for the good gifts that you have poured out upon our days, for children and the joy and the laughter and the excitement they have, for our seniors who look back over the decades and remember the good gifts that you have given them, and even in this day, the gift of peace. So, Father, I pray for all of us during this season that Emmanuel, God, would be with us. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you. Lord, be gracious unto you and lift up his countenance upon you and give you this day peace. I don't have an order. Is there one more piece? Silent night. <coughs> Silent night. And who's leading that? The kids are leading, but everyone. All right, I'm going to leave.
All right, the old Jeff and Jared at the back will look after you. So, boys and girls, you want to go there. It's a little Christmas treat for the rest of us. Go have a seat, and then I do have some meal announcements.